Hey there, everybody. This is the Bones and Tub Show. We are brought to you by no one in particular, because advertisements suck. Yeah, they do. We are brought to you, however, by Catherine, Marie Doherty, Evelyn, and Agris Girl, our three patrons at patreon.com forward slash bones and tubs. And we don't have, you know, anything else. We're not trying to sell you a mattress. We're not trying to tell you anything about beard oil or... No yeah. special food boxes or anything like that. No. You know, we're brought to you just like PBS by viewers like you. And so, uh, this is the Bones and Tub Show. The Bones and Tub Show. <laughs> And welcome back to another episode of Bones and Tubs. This being the official season finale of Bones and Tubs, ending season one. It's been a long journey. What's this going to end up being? Episode 42? 42 or 43. It makes sense to be 42. You yeah. know, being like, you know, uh, it's the answer to everything in the universe, number 42. It's the answer to everything. Yeah, so. I don't know if that counts all the lost episodes. Because we had, what, like 15 that didn't make the cut due to... Pamela's fuck shit. As far as I'm concerned, we'll let conspiracy theorists in the future find our, our lost episodes. Yeah, good luck trying to fucking make sense of that shit. We'll make that shit like uh, like the Dark Tower, basically. Yeah. We'll make people search for it. Right. But, uh... It's good. You know, in some worlds, it's just an audio... It's just audio clips. In another world, it's a fucking... You know, it's a dildo. Pissed me off because it was like every time we would... I would go to throw one up there, we had all these pre-recorded madness episodes yeah. and then like a minute and 20 seconds in it would just start mm. motherfucker but whatever i mean here we are you know it's all about the journey at this point yeah, definitely so we're uh wrapping up this season but don't worry i, I had to reiterate this several times to you guys because i feel like some of you'd be like oh when they're coming back don't worry it's like gonna be like two weeks that's it yeah just a short it's just basically a short break to uh collect of our collect our uh, fucking psychic energies and make a video that we will be uh, posting probably coinciding with the first seat the second season beginning it's most important i'm not very good at editing videos right now this computer i have is just not having it just not not all about it no i can do uh simple like cuts and pastes okay can't do any anything else we'll keep it simple it's a fucking alienware from five years ago yeah why can't it edit video because it's terrible. Well, we need a, you need a computer with an i7 processor. Uh, <laughs> guess what? I don't have fucking $2,000 to throw at a computer. Because motherfuckers weren't, you know, editing video five years ago or anything. Right. Motherfuckers mm-hmm. haven't been editing video for the last fucking 80 years. It's whatever, though. It almost sent me into a fucking ape-like rage. It, you know, it doesn't make any sense to me because, like, fucking Stalin was able to, like, edit photos of himself with people he didn't like. All right. How the fuck can we can't cut two pieces of fucking footage together? The only program I found that works that's free is like like I said, just copy and paste. I can add text too. Well, I guess the last thing we need to do, one of us just needs to go to college and get a fucking computer engineering degree. Yeah, maybe then we'll figure it out. Make one. Maybe we should employ Adam. Yeah, Adam the Silent we could. to help us. Indeed. Yeah, I just came up with that name. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Maybe the Silent doesn't sound right. Adam the Crusher. I yeah. don't know. I'll crush you for sure. I mean. I'd like to firstly go out there. I know, at least on my part, I feel like I've been slacking here lately when it comes to the podcast and everything. And I apologize for that. I've got a lot of fucking irons in the fire going on right now. Yeah. And it's not to say I've pushed the podcast aside by any means, but it's just my attention has to be focused in multiple directions. Yeah. And since I'm not a woman and can think about, you know, six things at the same time, it's harder for me than it is for them. We're not able to, to, to know or assume others' genders, but is it, is it sexist to assume your own gender? At this point, can, I don't, see, I don't think it is. Can you assume that you're not a woman and be offended at the same time? See, that's the problem. I don't. I can't get offended by it. But maybe somebody else does. Yeah. You know, maybe getting offended is their kink. Mm. Kink is their offend. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking, anyways. I that's like what we got to. We're in peak 2017 right now. <sighs> I think that's the reason we're ending it now. Yeah. Like, 
I feel as the collage because I think the next phase is about to click in here soon. Fuck, I hope so. I'm tired of this phase. I think basically like the, the twin hurricanes of, of the South came together and decided this was the end of a cycle. Yeah. And the new cycle had to begin soon. I, uh, real quick, I got a, a comment about that hurricane thing. I was at a conversation the other day with a coworker at the factory of sadness and they were talking in terms of, uh, Left versus right, of course. Yeah, of course. Of course most course. people aren't able yeah. to see outside the spectrum. Yeah. But he's like uh, commenting on a story about how the libtards are, uh, which I, I don't know why I fucking hate that term. Uh, you, you know, or Democrats. Yeah. Or another one. Uh, I don't know. Either one, Republican, Democrat, hate. It's just. Because I mean, you could throw it at somebody. You could be like retardicans. Yeah. For real. Just by itself. Yeah. But anyway, he was saying it was bullshit story about uh, how the libtards had said that Trump was creating these hurricanes to hit areas of people that have, uh, you know, different ethnicities. Yeah. And all this. And I said, well, that is pretty fucking stupid yeah. to think that one man would do something like that. I said, but it's not stupid to say that the, the weather can be created. That's a fact. Yeah. And they were like, no, it's not. So I used the limited inter- internet privileges that we have in the factory of sadness. It's kind of like a North Korean state. Yeah. I pulled up a news article from uh, Dr. Ben Livingston. Yeah. You know, founder of the Weather Channel. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I think he was Air Force, also a meteorologist. Nice. But he talked about in the 70s where he was able to use, um, I think they used two Cessnas, and they had fuel additives in the jet stream, a.k.a. chemtrails, and he was talking about how they were able to steer and control hurricanes Hmm. with those fuel additives. And then they were saying, like, how awesome it was because we'd never have to worry about a landfall hurricane again. They could just steer them back out into the ocean. Well, 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 well what the fuck happened then? Right. So then there was that story, and they just kind of looked at the computer with a blank stare of one that had had chosen not to accept. Yeah. So then I pulled up a more recent one. It was probably, what year was the Beijing Olympics? Shit, 2012 or 2008, something yeah, like that. A little while ago. Yeah, it's, it's been a few years. Fairly recent compared to the 70s. Yeah. There was a story in there, uh, I think it was a Time Magazine article and Popular Science uh, Magazine article, where they <clears throat> talked about the Chinese government using cloud seeding programs. There was a massive snowstorm headed out of rural China towards Beijing. Yeah. And they checker patterned the sky around Beijing, and the mm-hmm. storm stopped outside <laughs> of Beijing and poured like two feet of snow on the rural Chinese, but kept beijing uh, holy shit tv presentable what the fuck so these things are real yeah right so for them to like say that trump created this storm to hit hit i don't think that's true no but i do think that you could stop now i don't know maybe they've figured out through science like throwing a category five back out in the ocean might create a fucking bigger shit storm that they just can't get rid of but i'll tell you what though I, i gotta throw this out there I mean, God bless all the rescue and relief efforts that have been going on with both these hurricanes. That's yeah, great. Right. And God bless those individuals who um, have taken it upon themselves to save all that precious merchandise. Oh, um, man. Um, in I those was... stores, man. I mean, like, they, see, it's all about the narrative. So I'm starting to think, no, they're not looting. It's not looting. No, they were... They're protecting the goods. See, and as soon as it's over with, they're going to bring them back. The night that Irma happened, I was thinking, like, I had a hard time sleeping because I was worried about all those Yeezys. And those uh, Air Jordans. Yeah. I'm thinking like, well, how are they going to, you know, they didn't evacuate in time. Exactly. Are they going to be okay? And then I woke up the next morning, I saw that group of... Uh, All those electronics? <laughs> yeah. They, that group of concerned citizens went in there and liberated all those items. Yeah, they were concerned about, about the bastions of capitalism, which is consumerism. Yeah. I'm sure they'll bring them back once it's all over. Well, they right? only did it for safety. They yeah. didn't do it for... I mean, it wasn't looting or anything. Yeah, they'll keep them precious... And close and, and under control. And See those racist ass police went and arrested a bunch of African Americans. They said they were looting. Yeah. Well, I saw that they've been shaming, uh, different police departments in Florida have been like capturing people looting and then t- taking photos of like 20 dudes <laughs> in cells. Like, Hey, if you feel like looting, uh, look at these guys. I don't think they felt too good about it now. Man, I just think it's racist as fuck. Yeah. Really? Well, maybe it's just a cultural thing. Yeah, we probably just don't understand it due to yeah. our cisgendered, uh, our white male privilege. White male privilege. I guess that's just the way it is, though, right? I hope that with the end of season one, this all ends too, because I'm fucking sick of it. What's that? Oh, all, all this shit. All the shit. That oh, we're dude, talking it ain't about. gonna end. I think it's gonna get turned up to eleven nah, before man, it's fucking over with. I'm gonna it's, lose my fucking. It mind. hasn't hit peak yet. I mean, it, 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 we just we just started getting into the good stuff where they're saying that like 
you know, if you if you won't date a trans woman, that makes you transphobic. Yeah, maybe it's just because I'm I'm plugged physically into the internet and I've already seen these things. I'm just. I, I mean, I explained this to uh, a dude of ours, Heckler, the other day. I said, "Listen, Heckler, this is how it works. I think like, this is this is the world they want to live in now." I was like, "You today, as yourself, and mind you, everyone, if you don't know Heckler, he is a mm, older gentleman with a long gray salt and pepper beard, yeah, uh, shaved head." Very masculine looking. Mm. Looks like a. Uh, some people call him Allah Akbar, some sort of a Middle Eastern porn star. But he's he's all on good terms. But anyways, so he's so hot he can melt steel beams. I told him, right? Yeah. I told him I was like, if you wanted to right now, you could say I'm a woman. Right. Leave your beard. And by their standard, we would have to be like, you're a woman. And then if you approach me. For sexual congress. Yeah. And I refused based on the fact that in my mind, I didn't believe you were a woman. You still looked like a man yeah. with full male, uh, accoutrement. Mm. I would have that, I would in fact be transphobic if I did not in fact suck your lady dick. I'm, a, I'm upset that you wouldn't suck his lady dick. Right? I'm triggered. Triggered? Yeah. Fuck. Fuck off. Fuck all yeah. the way off. Yeah. So I feel like we, we're just hitting peak right now. It's gone into new levels. Like, here's the thing. I was always a proponent of postmodernism. But I didn't, I, maybe, forgive me everyone, I didn't think it was going to get, I didn't think it was going to be like this. Yeah. Like, I didn't think, I thought it was just going to be the dropping of all, like, labels and all, like, things that we get placed upon us, you know, <laughs> in a way. But we were all, we would all be willing to have our own standards to abide by. I'm shocked at the level of stupidity. Yeah. I remember a, there's a earlier 2000s stand-up with Joe Rogan where they were talking about Bush. Yeah. And they were, like, wondering if it could get worse than, than uh, W. <laughs> and he said, I think there are people in suits behind the scenes, and they're like, I think we can go dumber. <laughs> you know? Let's do it. Let's do it. But they fucking went all the way. Yeah. They went. They turned a, a maximum volume of 10 all the way to 42. If you want to believe in the in the vein of Alex Jones, I think the shit's, I think the fluoride's working. Fucking A, it is. I think it overworked. <laughs> Let's a, open the dosage just a little bit, see what happens. That's Let's another thing. Curious. I wanted to announce, we talked about it in the past, and I wanted to see what you thought about doing it. The bones and tubs in between episodes. But I have these volcanic eruptions of thought sometimes that I want to record in a microphone. Yeah. Fluoride's one of them. Fluoride? So definitively. Look out for some in between episodes. And it's one of those things, okay, it, it, not to, I don't want to hit on fluoride for too long. We got things to talk about today. For sure. But, okay, here's the thing about it. <laughs> Would it be like, you know, people still tell you that if you think fluoride makes, does things to us, that you're a conspiracy theorist and you're dumb. You're a tinfoil hat wearing motherfucker. So are most of the other countries in the world that removed say, it from their yeah, water supply. Yeah, like Europe for the most part has completely removed it from their water supply. Mm. So if you're saying that I'm a conspiracy theorist, tinfoil wearing motherfucker, yeah. then you're calling the entirety of Europe, which, I mean, uh, that's hard to say. I mean, really, you know. <laughs> when we watch Euro Trip, I'm sure that's an accurate yeah. representation of Europe. Listen, Europe's in a, you know, they got their own shit going on right now. We're in a, I think that's the whole plan is everybody, everybody who had the means to protect anybody is, is in a, embroiled in their own, uh, internal conflicts right now. Well, as they say in Europe, Allah Akbar. Well, it's like, you know, one thing I could say, okay, have you heard about the genocide that's going on in Myanmar right now? No. Okay. So Buddhist, uh, Myanmar Buddhists, right, are, um, systematically killing Muslims and, um, Hindus, mm -hmm. right? And okay, that's fucked up. I mean, they're killing everybody. Right. They're just they're not they're not going after just terrorists. Is that they're, the um the it's like a self proclaimed act of self defense pre self defense? That's basically what they're justifying it as. Okay. Now here's the thing. Now it is I, I don't I don't you know agree with it whatsoever. I don't think you should wholesale just start slaughtering people mm. just because you feel like it and you think you're <laughs> for whatever. Listen, those means don't justify the ends. Yeah. That's all there is to it. But I do find it interesting that some of the regressive left logic that people have thrown out there when it comes to Islamic terror is being thrown back in their faces. Because, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, they, like you, when some Islamic terror event happens, they're like, well, he's not a real Muslim. Right. Right. And, uh, they say Islam is a religion of peace. Yeah. Okay. Well, this shit's going on and people are throwing that shit back in the aggressive left's face and they're like, well, they're not real, but they're not real Buddhists. Buddhism is a religion of peace. Hmm. Ba -tss -tss. Right. Ow! Got him. Still like my own personal tenet of don't be a. Yeah. Just don't be a.
I mean, that works. You can do whatever you want. I'm not mad at you for it. Yeah. Just don't be a... Okay, can we wrap our religious doc- dogma around that notion? <sighs> See, the problem is that I feel like it... it it's a, it's all a slippery slope. If me and you started a religion based around our podcast, and we rose it up and we got our congregation going, as soon as we ca- as soon as we fucking shed the mortal coil, yeah, someone would fuck it up. Oh, for sure. Like they would take our they would take our doctrine, even if we were speaking literally, and they'd be like, "Well, it's a things are up for interpretation here. Right. We have to we have to be able to. No, it's just logic and reason, everybody. It's fairly simple. It's too easy. Yeah. Don't be. A- yeah. Don't be. A- and and use fucking logic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't be afraid if if some dude fucking plows into a crowd of people, whether it be a fucking Muslim, whether it be a Christian or whatever. Even if you see me on tape driving into a furry convention with a 1993 Ford Escort. It is what it is. I mean, I'm I mean, only talking about people that have souls. I'm not yeah. talking about... Oh, furries. See how easy it is? Yeah. We, we You know how we feel about fur- furries. Don't call them furries. They're not worth that. No. Furries. Do you see the latest... Uh, Furry hate we got on our Instagram. Uh, no, I didn't. We got one that uh, on that um, kill it with fire meme. Oh, did furry. we? Some guy said, uh, "He's guy in quotations," but yeah. he's like, "I guarantee you I'm better with my rifle than you are with your phone." <laughs> <laughs> and he was a furry. Yeah, I just oh, nice. uh, ignored it because uh, that's what they hate the most. Yeah. Well, if anybody who knows us knows, you know, we didn't start. We did not start this war for, yeah. against the fur. Uh, I keep someone calling them furies. Furies. The the furies. <laughs> Uh, if it comes Swedish, yeah. we did not start this war against the Furies. No. No, we did not start this war against the Furries. They, the shots were fired first by them. Yeah. For no particular reason. Yeah. I was just walking by a cat box and they threw a little cat litter on me on purpose. Yeah. Fuck them. So, I mean, so we decided we were going to fight fire with fire. Hmm. Because it started off with one little, it was started off as one little skirmish, you know, between t- myself and somebody else. <coughs> yeah. And then it just snowballed. Because then I blocked him because he was saying some hateful shit. Yeah. And then he got all those fucking little dudes to fucking start chiming in on it. I'm glad to see that it's still organically spawning anger, though. Yeah. It's good. I'm, I'm glad for that. To see the, make, the fire that we've created is... It makes me happy that when people go on Instagram and they look up the hashtag furries, <laughs> that's a picture they see. Permanently. Permanently. Yeah. Let's, uh, is it topic time? I think it's time for the topics. You, we don't have to pay the tax man today, but we are on a deadline. Yeah, that's true. I have to go pick up my... My lad from school. Yes. You know, getting that getting that round peg sanded off just a little bit more today. Yeah, yeah. Fitting no. that round hole. But he's star-shaped. I feel like all children are star-shaped and they need to fit them in round holes. Yeah, that makes more sense. Fuck them, you know. Yeah, whatever. Fuck individuality and creativity. So what are we talking about first? You want to talk about FEMA? Yeah. Let's talk about FEMA then. Wanna, this topic came to us from... Uh, Son of the Law. Son of the Law? Yeah. That sounds good. And then... Um, Oh, Mermaid Afterlife. Mermaid Afterlife. That sounds like a good name. Yeah. She sent us, they both sent us this topic when they wanted us to talk about FEMA. And we've never really like, I mean, I'm sure we've scratched the surface of FEMA before, mm-hmm. but we've never really like delved deep into I, the, into the fuckiness of FEMA. Correct me if I'm wrong, but, uh, FEMA wasn't really a thing before, um, one of the natural disasters. Katrina? Was it Katrina? I think it was Katrina. And Bush used that crisis because we would just never let a good crisis go to waste. Yeah. Uh, he used it for, uh, a shitload more of extra federal funding, aka taxation is theft. Yeah, and took a bunch of emergency agencies and put them all in one giant black umbrella called FEMA. 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 And I don't know. I think we talked about it one of the previous shows, Presidential Directive Fifty One. Yeah, but it was one of the ones that Bush put into power. Uh, another carte blanche power grab that says any uh, undefined emergency that the president declares gives. All governmental power and continuity, government power to FEMA and the, and the executive office to uh, take control of everything, public and private. Yeah, and uh, so if, all all infrastructure. Yeah, look up the look up the Googles, you know, everybody on Presidential Directive Fifty One, and see the you know FEMA camps. I mean, there are videos of people going to these places, uh, news news crews, not just regular people, but uh, showing these things. You know, giant fenced in areas with inward facing barbed wire and guards. Uh, they've got job applications for, for guards, security guards at these places. And, uh, I mean, they're staffing them right now. So, I mean, we posted shit about the little drills they like to do, too. <clears throat> yeah. So, I mean, also, uh, what was it Mermaid Afterlife said about the, uh, Walmarts? There's yeah. videos on YouTube of, uh, Walmarts, even in our area, that have been, uh, hardened 
Hmm. You know, there's one in, in towards Cincinnati somewhere that they put a bunch of inward facing barbed wire on the roof, and there's supposed to be some sort of a contract between FEMA and the um, the Walmart Corporation to where they have their stores set up in a certain way to where the parking lots can be evacuated of cars and all that shit. Yeah, and then they have these uh, trucks with razor ribbon. They can be unloaded from the back of a pickup truck, so they can just make an instant fucking yeah. perimeter around the entire building, huh. and then uh, use like bobcats to immediately push back all the shelves, yeah, and create housing. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. So that just lets me know that if some shit were to happen, uh, step one: burn down the Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's that it, simple. The author of uh, the Hunger Games series too was taking a jab at FEMA. If you look up um, the Hunger Games map. Mm -hmm. The different districts, and then look up FEMA districts as the actual FEMA district map across the United States. Yeah, they literally have districts based on areas of production and population density. What the fuck? Yeah, so that's a good Google search for you there. Yeah. That's a, it's a good. I mean, FEMA's here to help. The government's here to help you. Yeah. Uh, they did a rollout during the Bush administration. Maybe it was Obama. End of, end of Bush, early Obama administration, where in California, they had uh, set up FEMA camps. And they were hurting in homeless people and people that couldn't, uh, you know, that needed temporary shelter. They were giving them armbands. Yeah. There was a color for a permanent resident, a color for temporary resident, and one where they had like a 72-hour pass. Hmm. And they were being processed. But everybody had to uh, abide by an 8 p.m. curfew. And they had a vaccine um, program where you had to have it to be a permanent resident. My face right now. Right. Yeah. yeah, if only you could see it out there in the world. See that everybody wants to point a finger and look at like, oh, it's not going on. Well, it is going on, yeah. and it's being A/B tested in all these different areas. Because yeah. if they did it in all the areas, then we'd be nervous. There's got to be areas though that they know like <coughs> their shit's not going to fly as as easily as others. No, I feel sure. like the major metropolitan area, areas would be like whatever. They're used to the government coming in and doing things for them. You know what I mean? Right. But around here, like around where we live, I feel like. If you drive around, especially in the rural, area, even more rural areas, you're gonna see a lot of no soliciting, no trespassing signs, yeah. and, and they fucking mean it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, politely, well, I'll kill you. I mean, Stay at least they're generally kind about it. They don't. I mean, there are people that literally have signs like, you know, trespassers will be shot, and pictures of guns and shit like that. And Agris girl was talking to me on Facebook about um, she was driving through Eaton the other day before Irma hit, and there were a bunch of FEMA trailers headed mm. headed south on the railroad. Fuck that. We're here to help. Yeah, we're here to help, right? Yeah. What was that? Uh, attack, of, attack from Mars where they were broadcasting the message, uh, we're not attacking, we're your friends as they're attacking. Yeah. I mean, it's like, uh, but then again, like, there's just certain things like, and I think people are starting to wake to certain notions more. I mean, here's the thing. you, It's like a natural evolution, and I'm kind of glad of it. It starts with, like, say, a Black Lives Matter uh, protester. You might have some that are really just in it for the looting, right? Oh, for sure. And just in it to, to sow chaos. But then you have your average one who begins to think, maybe it's not just the police are just targeting black people. Maybe it's a more important problem, like, not to say what they thought wasn't important, but it's, not it's, important. it's a progression. It's a progression to something broader, i.e., and I tell people this. Mm. I've been telling people this forever. Every time a new shooting were to happen, you know, a couple of years ago when all that shit was in its worst, when its biggest throws, I was like, this is less about uh, what color your skin is. I was like, this is class warfare. Oh, for sure. It's like that we're living in. I was like, and it's the over-militarization of our police force. And unfortunately, right now, there are certain groups who are playing right into that, into that, making all of us want to, they, they're trying to make us play into this. Yeah, it's a controlled narrative. Like, they're trying to make us think that we want our police to be more heavily armed so that they can, uh, quell these riots and all this shit between ones, whether it's the neo-Nazis or whether it's Antifa, they're trying to make us be okay with our police force basically becoming a lightweight military. Yeah. And they love these uh, rate of attacks on cops that everybody gets behind. The uh, thin blue line crowd where they see these, uh, and it's terrible to hear, but like you just see a regular random cop that's not doing anything wrong in a car, yeah. or they stop to do a, help somebody change a tire and they get shot. You know, they love to parade those stories because then that helps them federalize the police. Well, it, I think it all goes along with something I was thinking about the other day, and it kind of sickened me, was the fact that like, I am a staunch individualist, right? Mm. Always have been. What you do is what you do, and you own up to what you do. It doesn't matter where you came from or what you are. That's your you, – whatever you're – whether it's criminal or whatever, mm. you're, you own it, right? Right. Okay. 
The, the problem is, is that both sides, they use collectivism when they want to, and they use individualism when they want to as well. Right. Like, a uh, good example, not to diverge from the FEMA thing, but think about, like, the whole thing with DACA, you know, the Dreamers thing, okay? Yeah. Now, most of you know from listening to this show for, what, 42-some-odd episodes that I, for the most part, am for legal immigration. Mm. In fact, I think they should, you know you know, reform the entire process of, of immigration. Mm. I think they need to make the path to citizenship easier. Right. I mean, half the reason, I mean, people are like, well, these dreamers have been here for, you know, X amount of time. Well, here's the problem with that because they never gave them a path to citizenship. Like the whole dreamer thing was met as a stopgap. Yeah. But how many fucking people come here on that and have already gotten citizenship? Most of the people that are against the DACA and the uh, illegal immigration are people that immigrated legally. Exactly. Because it just shows that, you know, it's, well, a different, that's, it's another class thing. That's because dream, the whole DACA thing was meant as a temporary measure. Mm. It was never meant to be something permanent. Fucking way of life. But the thing is, it's like, if we, you have, here's the problem. Like I said, it's all about individualism and collectivism, right? So like, once the, once Trump decided he's going to end this whole dreamer thing, and but he, like I said, I'm not trying to back him up, but he did give Congress six months to figure this shit out. Mm. Because... We all knew, and even Obama said that the whole dreamer thing was a temporary measure. That eventually he would have, I assume even Obama would have hoped Congress would have, uh, changed it. Mm. But the problem is, is that, okay, if the executive order is in place, Congress has no reason to do anything about it. Right? Because as long as it exists, they don't have to, they don't have to do anything about it. They don't have to piss off certain parts of their constituency in order to pass or deny it. Right? Right. Well, okay. You know what Trump basically did? He pulled the fucking Cortez. Yeah. He scuttled the fucking ship and he's taken all the heat for it. Oh, fuck it. Cause he's like, listen, you motherfuckers need to get off your asses and actually do something. These cocksucking congressmen and senators, all they do, I'd say 90% of them, all they do is make good promises. They, they get these PR teams together and see what their fucking constituency that they've aligned themselves with want. And then they just, they offer these free programs and give away our own money that they take to just continue this. And all they want to do is stay in fucking office. Yeah. Well, and it's like I tell people, like, people bitch about, like, uh, fucking Maxine Waters and the shit she says or even Chuck Schumer. All those people. I was like, you do realize, I was like, in real reality, they don't believe anything they actually say. Right. I was like, all these little things they say, they're bites and bits that they use in their fucking campaign messages. Because for where, wherever they're from, they're going to use those to get reelected. The fucking marketing scheme. Because people, like, whether your five minutes of hate is dedicated towards liberals or whether it's dedicated towards Republicans, they're all playing into their own districts. And all they're getting is paid. That's all, the, that's all they care about. They don't really care about you and they don't care about none of this stuff. Unfortunately, we don't have politicians that really believe in anything anymore. No. I mean, we don't fucking... I'm, I'm tired of politicians in general. Fuck them all, you know? Like, there's not really any honest ones. And even the ones that I would even lightweight consider honest, they still play the game. I'm liking Rand more and more these days. I do like Rand, but the problem is, is like, I feel like Daenerys Targaryen in this situation. Yeah. She, like, I want to, I want to break the fucking wheel. You're ready to fuck your nephew and move on. Right. I'm ready to fucking hatch three dragons. I'm going to, I'm ready to walk into my husband's fucking funeral pyre, hatch three dragons, (laughs) and burn this motherfucker to the ground. See? And start over again. Bones and tubs. Bones and tubs. Yeah. If anybody wants to draw a picture of me, uh, in the guise of Daenerys Targaryen, you are free to do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the Russian on that one. That would be awesome. It's gonna be done. Well, maybe you, like, we have three dragons, right? So maybe, like, you and me and there's gotta be somebody else, the doctor, maybe? Yeah. Riding dragons. And mm-hmm. we're all, like, you know, wearing, I mean, I don't know if you want to be Daenerys or I could be Daenerys. I prefer you, but. Okay. Wearing, like, a flowing white gown and white <laughs> hair. Yeah. Uh, but. I want to, we, we need to break the wheel. It just keeps going and they love it. They fucking love it. They yeah. are like, they think of themselves like the true partis, uh, you know, partitions of our society. We're just plebeians to them. Mm. So they think we're all dumb and they think we're just going to take what they say. <clears throat> you know what I mean? But unfortunately, as much as I like to knock on our, on our fucking Frankfurt school style of education, mm. we did get fucking, at least, I feel like some of my teachers gave me the ability to, like, think constructively. Yeah, creatively. Creatively, and think around what they tell us. Mm-hmm. To at least some extent. Well, let's see. Let's icing the FEMA cake real quick and move on. Okay, okay. To yeah, next. sorry about that. No, I, yeah. I think I got on a huge fucking that's what we do. diatribe there for a minute. That's why, we, that's why they love us. Yeah. Uh, there's also a video. Uh, what's that fucking documentary that they put out? You can watch for free on YouTube. Camp FEMA. Camp FEMA. Camp yeah. FEMA is an excellent one to watch. Um, 
it's just another example of anything that the government does. It doesn't matter if it's left wing or right wing. It's all the same fucking shadow bullshit. Yeah. Anytime you give the government any amount of power, they're going to fuck you. Yeah. And they're going to misappropriate funds and they're going to, I mean, you got an example of like, I'm sure that the FEMA response to, uh, the Irma situation or the uh, Harvey situation was slow at best. Yeah. The market responded much faster than a governmental fucking Goliath ever could. And you mm -hmm. saw like Budweiser, they sent, uh, did you see what they did? They sent water. They, yeah. They stopped making beer to, to, to send water. Send uh, canned water out to the people. Like, here's the thing. Like, if you look, you, there's, there is good, for, good examples of, of capitalism and bad examples of capitalism that come up both of these crises. I was mm -hmm. like, cause you have companies like that donating millions of dollars. And supplying them with water or whatever they need, <laughs> stopping the the means of production to actually make make money mm. to help them, right? Yeah. But at the same time, you know, you're gonna get a lot of those examples of price gouging and shit like that. See, and here's the thing too about that, and this is a mild tangent. I'm about to go on, if you don't okay. mind. Yeah, that's fine. I was watching uh, this video the other day, and it shook me out of my my mold. Yeah. And I feel like my mold's pretty loose, but I found the edge, and it cracked the edge. Okay. This guy was arguing for the price gouging. And here's the thing. I think I know where you're going with this. And this is, it completely reached, like, it changed the way I viewed it. I think it's, in, in some ways, it's disgusting, right? To yeah. think, like, you go to the store, but, and it's $99 for a fucking pack of Ice Mountain. Mm -hmm. But let's just say that you are in a position, like, you're, you're, yourself, right? Yeah. You've got a $100 bill laying around somewhere, tucked away in a rainy day fund or whatever. And you, you see, like, you know, you might have waited to the last minute or, or whatever, but you need water for your fucking family. Yeah. You're going to pay $100 for a case of water. That's true. The one thing that it prevents is people that go in there and stock up on more water than they can fucking use. And, you know, I, I knew where you were going with this, where it's basically stopping people from hoarding <clears throat> mm. in a crisis. Right. And I get that. But it also uh, incentivizes the supply of the market. So if you are a company that produces water, mm -hmm. and let's say that your shit's already sold out are you more likely to restock the shelves in a crisis if you're getting paid four dollars and 18 cents for a case of water or 99 dollars? that's true because they're gonna fucking buy a shitload more the the supplier is gonna buy a shitload more water the supply is gonna increase i only think of it in the sense that like in a crisis like that here's the problem like i feel like there are other ways of doing it without fucking the little man who's just trying to buy a case of water to survive with his family. I just right? think it's a natural evolution of the market. That's true. I mean, it's, it, it, it is, it is. If you, if you've taken any kind of <clears throat> economics class in your entirety, you know that any, any graph is going to show you when supply, when demand goes up, uh, go so does the price go up. Right. That's just the way things are. <clears throat> but I think like we need to at least mildly think outside the box on this one. Like I saw one place, they weren't price gouging. What they were doing was, is they were being conscientious about limiting how much you could buy. Because, like, you know, like you said, the problem is that people will hoard. Like, I've seen, I saw pictures of people with, like, grocery carts just stacked and stacked with bottles of water. Mm -hmm. You don't need that much. No, you don't. You don't need that much for And if you want to have more than that, week. stock up before a fucking crisis happens. Exactly. If you want to have a fucking supply of shit in your basement... Everybody no one's should, stopping you. Every should, everybody should have at least a couple days worth of food and water in their house in case of a crisis. But for you to be the cocksucker that grows in three deep with three carts just to buy water because you waited the last minute, go fuck yourself. Like those whole notions are designed around the idea so that people like you and me can't take advantage of people when shit hits the fan. Yeah. I also like, I also heard an argument about the minimum wage that fucked me up. Okay, let's hear it. Uh, it was Peter Schiff. I don't know if you watched any of his videos. I posted one of his videos on the page. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, he did one where he said that we need to get rid of the minimum wage. And he used an argument from before, uh, whenever the, the federal minimum wage was enacted. Um, just, just say 60s, because I don't fucking remember. Yeah. But he's like, think about back in the day before the minimum wage. And you go, you pull up to a service station. The guy's not getting paid dick for hour, right? But he runs out of the station. He fills your car up, he washes your windshield, checks your tires, looks under the hood, and mm -hmm. he's, like, jovial and happy. He made his money from tips. Yeah. In a time where we weren't being taxed to death, hmm. in a time where we weren't being required business owners, if you're going to own a business and you're going to hire somebody part-time or, or full-time, whatever, and he's only going to make you profit of $10 an hour, yeah. you're not going to pay him more than 5 Yeah. or 6 because you're going to make a profit. That's your job as mm -hmm. a business owner. If you don't make profit, you don't have a business. Yeah. And, you know, it just takes all this shit that's starting to fuck my head up even more. But, like, I don't think there should be a minimum wage. 
I don't think that price gouging should be government regulated. Yeah. But I also think that all this shit that's come about that fucks society is not necessarily all the government. It's our laziness. Yeah. Because we don't have a, a sense of community or personal responsibility. I feel like in all reality, if you want to talk about what's ruined the sense of community, like honestly, beyond like my neighbors that live on either side of me, I don't know anybody's name in the neighborhood. Right. I've, well, we've been like engineered not to go out of our houses, not to trust anybody outside of yeah. our fucking backyard. And that's, I think, where like a sense of individualism has slightly ruined us just a little bit. But plus, when you creep, when you put in media narrative, mm. i.e., like the notion that your fucking next door neighbor is a rapist, right? All of our neighbors are rapists. He might be a rapist. I'm probably he a rapist might. too by that standard. I mean, come on. Do they know? Right. They won't. Yeah. They see me with my family, you know. At my house, cooking dinner together. Yeah. But they're like, what goes on behind those doors? Well, it's like they talked about back in the day, just a couple of decades ago, you could go outside at, uh, you know, in the summertime at six o'clock at night and you'd see people like cooking and playing in the yard and kids running up and down the street and all this. And now you just go outside and walk through the neighborhood and all you see are like blue glows coming from the living room. Yeah. Take a fucking hammer out of your garage and smash your fucking TV. Mm-hmm. I'm here to tell you. You know, don't smash your don't smash your MP3 player phone yet because you listen to Bones and Tubs right. on that. You can walk around with your with us in your ears. Yeah, but I mean, seriously, if you just take a break, take a stoic look at things, and unplug yourself from television, unplug yourself from news, fuck it, unplug yeah. yourself from social media for three fucking days yeah. and see what it does to you. It's fucking life changing. Yeah, and that's me off my soapbox. No, and I, I understand where you're coming from with that though, like. I've noticed it here lately. I I need I need to try to do better, but just you know, putting your phone down. Don't turn on the TV. Just right. sit for a little bit and talk. Right. You know what I mean, especially with your children. Oh, for sure. You're you should be the first one that they like come to for advice. They're the first ones tell each other stories and stuff like that. Like yeah, they're the society is ruining us as, as individuals. Yeah. You know, it's uh it's something we have to unplug from. Otherwise, we're just going to continue on there. Bleeding like sheep, you know, yeah. and hating each other. The fleecing will continue. For sure. Wait. Until we do something about it. This has been your bones call to action. Yeah. Smash your TV. Mmm. All right. Except, I mean, here's, I can't say that completely. There are shows that I actually like. I mean. I don't watch the news, though. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. I've seen it with my grandparents. You know, they don't leave the house, and all they get is that television. And they're just. That's their window into the world, and it's, that's the fucked up part. Is it's terrifying. If that's the window you're looking out of, there's a problem. I see them like once a week, and just it's it's fucking terrifying. Yeah. to talk to them. You imagine like just that's your that's your view into the world is like what the media is giving you. No fucking. You lie. would think that it is fucking hell. Yeah, Donald I mean, Trump is literally Hitler. Literally Hitler. Yeah, and we're living in the Third Reich. Right. Did you know that? No, I didn't. I didn't know it either. We're gonna start giving each other stiff handed waves. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> hey there. Hey, hey there, buddy. Right. But, um, but yeah, so. We hope you like our FEMA shake cake. Yeah. Definitely worth some YouTube time, Camp FEMA. Yeah. I hope we, we, we arced a spark in your brain. Presidential Directive 51. Yeah. You know? Look it up. Fucking go on a YouTube rabbit hole. Yeah. You can do it. For hours. I've done it before, many right. times. But, what uh. Our, well, what else did we have? Well, I know we wanted to tabble on 9 11 for a hot second. Oh, yeah. That's It is one. the 16th anniversary. Hmm. 16 years ago. Uh, what were you, do you remember that day? Yeah, I skipped school. Oh, you did? Yeah. See, I didn't skip school. I was actually at school. I remember, uh, it was between first period, er, or wait, first block and second block. Hmm. And what grade were we in? Ninth. Ninth grade. And I remember leaving the classroom of first block, and as we're, I was heading to the second, second block classroom, it was my math class, uh, Everybody in the hallways was talking about it. Mm. Oh my God, did you hear a plane hit the tower? This, mind you, this was before the second plane had hit. Yeah. Second plane I put in quotations. Qu- yeah, quote unquote plane. Yeah. Plane. I mean, I'm sure there's planes that hit it, but I, whether, whether that's what made it fall down. <laughs> right. See, a different I, story. I'll get into that in a minute. But, um, you know, I was uh, walking to class and I heard about it. And then as soon as we got to our second block, uh, teacher turned on the TV and we sat there and watched it for the rest of the day. Yeah. And that's all we did. Uh, I had, you know, football practice after school. It got canceled. Uh, we all went home early. And I remember going home and around here, if you, if you live in the southwestern Ohio area, we got a nice little scare going on because a fucking sonic boom went off. Yeah. At Wright, Pat, Fatter, uh, Wright Patterson, <laughs> <laughs> Wright Patterson Air Force Base. 
and uh, scared the living shit out of all of us. And then it didn't help that the local news was like, well, we see a fire uh, over over in Dayton somewhere. We think a plane might have crashed. Yeah, no shit. And everyone's like, what the fuck? Yeah, I remember gas was going up, too. I was talking to the doctor on the phone, the cell phone, about uh, the price gouging and how him and uh, Kenny Chapel had gone up to the gas station just watch the chaos. People yeah. People trying to pull in there and buy gas at like $4.50 a gallon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's another thing, man. And here's the thing that I'm starting to kind of uh, put into a user-friendly language in my mind. Mm-hmm. I get into these arguments with people, like I told you, the uh, the weather control thing. Yeah. It's easier for you as a person who doesn't want to shift your, your view of reality to just shoot me down and say that I'm a fucking crazy person. Yeah. Conspiracy theorist. Yeah. You know what's not easy is to go onto YouTube. I do this occasionally, uh, once every couple months, where I question everything that I know to be true. You yeah. know, everything, every, like, I'll pick something that I think is the craziest thing that I could look up, flat earth or whatever, yeah. whatever the fuck it might be. And uh, not too long ago, I, I was like, well, I know for a fact that planes hit the building. Yeah. So let's test that. So I just started watching videos mm-hmm. of uh, people that recorded, and um, I stumbled across one that was the craziest thing at the time I could think of to look at. Hologram plane hits Trade Center. Hmm. And I'm like, okay, here we go. This yeah. is going to be fucking ridiculous. And it wasn't ridiculous. If you YouTube nine eleven holographic plane and, and and hit it the same way I did, think about it. It's crazy as fuck, right? Yeah. No fucking way did that happen. Yeah. Watch the video. Now here's the thing. Watch the video ten times. You know what's fucking crazy to me is it's like I was talking to a few people at the Factory of Sadness. <laughs> I had in service yesterday at the Factory of Sadness. Hmm. And I mentioned at the beginning of class, I was like, you know what I'd rather do today than learn the things we were coming here to learn? I was like, I'd rather just watch 9-11 documentaries all day. For sure. I was like, let's let's just watch some and see what we think. I was like, because I guarantee you this room of 15 people that at least half of them don't believe that there is no conspiracy in it. Right. And the other half believe something. And then there's probably two or three that know that it was all a sham. Mm. Yeah. But because, uh, I mean, let's face it. Jet fuel don't burn steel beams, just saying. No, you don't. You don't see that ever. You never have and you never will. Not only for the fact of, let's just say that for a second, they were planes, which yeah. I don't believe anymore. I don't believe they were planes. Yeah. Um, on the impact of a plane hitting a, a fucking building with steel on the outside, all yeah. those narrow windows, the thing in between the windows were steel beams. Mm-hmm. A plane's not going to go through that. Yeah. Okay, so... Even assuming that planes managed to go through steel outer walls, all of the fucking fuel exploded on impact. Yeah. There is no long sustained burn. High temperature burn. Yeah. Jet fuel burns a lot faster than regular fuel. The explosion. Right. It fucking all exploded in the beginning. It didn't weaken the steel. And even the pancake theory that I don't know if that was the official one they went with or just one of the first few theories that they used. The buildings didn't fall like a pancake. They didn't weaken on the floor of impact and then fall completely sustained on the top and then collapse sideways or fall off the way you would expect. They fucking disintegrated. Well, on the fact, like, one, the black boxes were never recovered. Right. Well, they had uh, the the buildings fall at free fall speeds, right? Fast As fast as gravity. Um, The concrete and steel turned into dust and evaporated. There was molten steel at the bottom mm-hmm. of the building. Yeah. The black boxes weren't recovered, but they were able to recover the passports that, yeah, of yeah. the fucking terrorists. Exactly. Suck my fucking dick. Yeah. How about that? I mean, here's the thing, everybody, and there might be some of you out here that don't believe that there is a conspiracy here. Now, who did it? We, I couldn't tell you. Shadow state. Yeah. Blame it on the shadow state. Do if, it. If you look at, and another crazy thing to look at is the, uh, just type in 9-11 occult and look at what happened symbolically on that day. Uh, I'm not going to shoot shots at any particular, um, you know, brotherly secret societies. Yeah. But they have one in particular that has a, um, two pillars in their entire thought process. Mm-hmm. I don't remember the tower's names, but one is Boaz. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember the other. Okay. But in that, it was a... It was an occult um, ritual. Okay. So they tore down the two pillars. They merged them into one world hmm. trade. If you look at the new building, it yeah. looks like two buildings smashed together. And then they lit the pentagram on fire. Hmm. They burned the pentagram yeah. to siphon off the rest of the occult ritual. They yeah. then basically hoodwinked all of America into two unjustified wars 
and an endless war on terrorism. Could this very well have been a beam breaking, to quote the Dark Tower? For sure. Could have been an attempt to break the beams? It's heavy as fuck. Or whatever it is that actually exists. Mm. See, uh, I'm not quite finished with the last book of the Dark Tower. I'm getting there, though. Yeah. And after I'm finished, depending on how it ends and depending on where I go from there, I feel like I'm definitively going to be writing a letter to Stephen King. Yeah. I want to know how much of what he wrote is, like, just shit. And what's because well, I'm I'm starting to believe that he actually believes some of this. Well, if you uh, if you if you do what I what I offered you and restart immediately, restart the first book. Yeah, it will fuck your head up mm-hmm. more than I thought it would. I was listening to it on the way over here. Fuck, it's like he if you go back and read through it, and then you uh, I'll let you borrow the um, Elmo's got it right now. Yeah, but he's got the um, on writing the nonfiction version. Yeah, where he talks about like great authors. We don't create stories. We find stories. He's like, these stories are already written. Well, see, and that's the thing, like, with the Dark Tower is, is that, like, <clears throat> I don't know how it's going to end. I, you know, next time I talk to you, I will, because I'll be finished, and I'll probably have to dabble in a little bit. I expect a phone call. But I'm like, not saying you should call, but I imagine you will. But here's the thing, like, if you're telling me I'm going to want to read the first book again, and the thing, that doesn't make sense in my head, because as Stephen King has said that, um, when he wrote the Dark Tower, the, or the Gunslinger, that was in 1970. Mm. It sat in his fucking attic for years. Dude. How would he, even, he didn't even know to have the whole story planned out. He's talking about, and I'm only, I'm only gonna, I'm only gonna pepper it for a second here, cause I, we've, we've gone off topic again. Yeah. That's what we do, and that's why you love us. Mm-hmm. He's talking about Magi's. He's talking about Susan. Yeah. He's talking about all the things that have yet to happen. Yeah. He even foreshadows that he's gonna lose his fingers. What the fuck? What the fuck? I don't know. It's almost mm-hmm. like if you read it and you assume that he created the story, right? Let's assume that he didn't find it. Now, in the nonfiction book, he talks about great authors are more like uh, um, archaeologists. Yeah. And he talks about your writer's toolbox. Mm-hmm. And he's like, the stories that you write are just ones that you pull out of the ground. They've already been there. And he's yeah. like, depending on your toolbox, you can pull out a full skeleton. Yeah. Or sometimes you just find a leg bone. Yeah. But he's like... To reread the fucking first book, it's almost like to think that if he created that story, he started with the Dark Tower and wrote backwards. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. It doesn't make any sense. Jesus. It's heavy as fuck. But anyways, I think we're going to have to start wrapping up here soon. But uh, We have one more. We have one more topic, I know. We have nine minutes. Okay, Don't all we? right, let's do it. Yeah, we got nine minutes. What was the other topic? Cougars. Oh. Yeah. Who sent us that? Mother Martin. Mother Martin sent us cougars. Yeah. Of course she would. Right. She's a little a little puma herself, yeah. isn't she? Minxin. Yeah. yeah. I think you're more like a bobcat. Bobcat and cougaring yeah. around. Yeah. yeah. Cats of prey. She's ferocious. Right. But it looks a little cuddly. Yeah. Yeah. Now, but, cougars yeah. cougars have always kind of freaked me out. Well, they're strong, strong sexual feminine women. <laughs> strong strong in the ways that they lure in uh who think, you know, men or boys who think that they are uh, you know, Fully uh, matured, but really but they they're don't. Not. They don't know anything. Maybe I mean to an extent. Would you like think of them like succubi? Uh, in a way, they, she reminds not her particularly, but yeah. cougars remind me of the speaking stone from the gunslinger with okay. the, the demon inside. So like they they absorb our the youthful energy of men. Yeah, look at all these young young men that are living in Florida or, or other places where retirement homes exist, and mm. they basically the only way they keep themselves hard is by keeping that will. Up on the headboard with their name on it. Yeah. They just pound into the future. Yeah. yeah. Feeding off their, their young, virile sexual energy. Buying Ferraris and shit. See, they wouldn't even want anything to do with me now. I'm past that point. I know. But uh, I'm no longer as young and virile I like, as I once was. I like to remember our childhood and, you know, I mean that in the old teenager slash early 20s sort of way, but I think that we were, we were targeted at times. Yeah. We were definitely in fields where cougars prayed in the in the bush. They they saw us like delicious meals to yeah. take part in. Definitely, I appreciate that little bobcat lady. I do too. I, I really do. I like watching because uh, we're outside of the we're outside of the wheelhouse of uh of prey at this point. Yeah, but I do like watching her hunt. You gotta think of it like this: like you know how most predators they they feed off the young of of their prey. Yeah, because they're the weakest. Mm. And you gotta think of that in the same sense. When you're that age, you are in fact the weakest amongst your yeah. amongst the young males. You're being driven solely by testosterone. Yeah, and they're crafting yeah. a crafting a storm for you to walk right into. Your 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 aptitude for logic and reason are not there yet. Yeah. I think that comes later. With I think 
you know, I don't know if we've talked about it before, but old man magic mm. on the show. I don't know. Uh, well, anybody out there doesn't know. We have always had this theory about old man magic. It started as old man strength because we yeah. noticed that when we were younger, there were these men who were like in their like 30s, 40s, and even 50s who somehow had this crazy animal magnetism. Even the little ones. But also could beat ass yeah. like nobody else. They didn't look like a bodybuilder, but they were able to crush them with their hands. Yeah. You know? And didn't make any sense. They were older. They shouldn't be able to do the things they do. Right. And yet they do. Here we are. Old man. It started as old man strength. Mm. But then it, it, it evolved into old man magic. Yeah. Simply because, you know, there's more than just actual physical strength there. There's other things too. Yeah. But uh I feel like we're coming into our uh, – I mean, not yet. I we're, feel like we got about another half decade before we're really coming into it strong. You can see the signs come when the beards start to perfect. Yeah. But – and then old the old man logic and reason mm. is starting to come in. I think that's the first thing to come in. Mm. You see things. You see things you don't approve of, but you're just – you get to this point where you're like, ugh, fuck them. You know what fucks me up about – it's just a side tangent, but I wish I'd have known that your brain doesn't fully develop until you're in your 20s. I think it. I think it's middle twenties, if not later. Yeah, that's what I, I read. That it was a, some sort of study they'd proven that your 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 full reasoning and your like creative mind and your logic mind don't come together until your late twenties. Yeah, and I just wish I could go back in time and fucking put the bottle down because I wonder how much of my potential I squandered with spirits. Yeah, but back then it was a little bit is wild and untamable. That's what they crave. It's the wildness of it all. It's the gaminess of your flavor that they like. Your fucking tight man flesh. You're still, you're still a wild young lad. Yeah. That's what the cougars crave. They want to come all over your, your, you know, it's kind of like Irma in a way. If yeah. you look at uh, Florida as America's shaft. Yeah. They want to park on top of that shaft at about 14 miles an hour and just tear it up. Yeah. Ruin it. Yeah. For, for future hurricanes. They want to leave you tired and wet yeah covered in moisture and wanting and they want you know large groups of men of specific race to come and steal all your footlocker imagine if like actual like natural disasters something big enough to actually have a consciousness Mm -hmm. like what if irma actually does have a consciousness what if irma is the collective consciousness of all cougars all together all their psychic energy come together they came together to moisten america's shaft yeah to abuse it yeah to to ruin it for others, man, and then leave. Yeah, when when they when their when their hunger was satiated, smoking a cigarette as they nap over the Midwest. I mean, what if collectively the entire Earth is one big cougar, <sighs> and all the natural disasters that happen are it trying to to get get it get its game on? Mm. Did you ever think of that? I did now. Yeah, and every once in a while it just and then it goes back to its slumber for X amount of time, and then it comes back because it needs more. Yeah. It feeds off of us. For sure. Physically, mentally, all the above. Cougars are most definitely a natural thing, too. You see, like, they reach their sexual prime right around cougardom. Mm-hmm. Right when it just lines up. Yeah. Nature created cougardom. So there you go. What did we call her? Mother Martin. Mother Martin. Yeah. The the bobcat lady. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, there's your cougar talk for you. There it is. But uh, I think it's about that time. I think we did it. We I did think, it. I think season one. We is- had a... Healthy amount of topics. We had a healthy amount of banter. Yeah. It's volume one is complete. Yeah. So you've got like literally two days, brown, around two days worth of, uh, talk to yeah, go over. For sure. M- m- even more content to go over. I'm going to do what I can to get it out today too. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. I mean, but, uh, come on. before we went, I wanted to, you know, just let you know, you know, we'll see you guys again on the other side. Yeah. We're gonna let we're gonna let this uh, the new brew season two. It's just gonna ferment for a couple of weeks, and then we're gonna fucking start drinking it again with you, with all of you, because that's what we do. The collective kombucha, yeah, of everybody yeah. together. But uh, we'll uh, see you again. You know, we'll meet again. We don't know how, don't know when. We love you. We really do. <laughs> Toxic air 
Each year. 